Today is all about the OC Megamon 15, a 15.4 inch 10 bit HDR director's monitor. Or at least that's what I've been using it for anyways. Because you may be excited seeing this 10 bit HDR monitor for only 900 bucks and be thinking, whoa, what a great deal for a 422 display monitor for your color grading suite. However, the Megamon 15 does not accept a 4K signal. So if you're someone like me that has a 2022 M1 Max MacBook Pro, you will not be able to use the OC Megamon 15 without some sort of conversion box. Just something to be aware of. But the fact that it is full 10-bit HDR and 1000 nits of brightness, it has a really vibrant, super bright, crystal clear image with an impressive contrast ratio of 1450 to one. I was using it without the sun hood out in the bright noonday sun deep in the valley of Santa Clarita, California. And the Megamon looked awesome. Having that 10 bit HDR display as your client monitor is superb. One of the small details that I enjoy is this little cheese plate on the back, which you can use to attach your wireless receiver. You even have some more quarter 20s on the opposite side here to attach even more accessories or another one of these little cheese plates. You also can get it with either a V mount plate or a gold mount plate, whichever you prefer. Speaking of which, I was really impressed with the low power draw. This thing only pulls 29 watts which means one of these high load 158 watt hour V-mount batteries lasted me a full eight hour day. So moving on to the ports, you have two SDI ins, one SDI loop out. Keep in mind, those are only 3G SDI because of the inability to accept a 4K signal, but you can do 1080 resolution up to 60 frames per second and even a DCI 2K up to 48 frames per second. You also have one coax in, one HDMI in, also have a port for a remote. And also down here, you even have a 3.5 millimeter audio in because you can monitor audio with the Megamon 15 with either the built-in speakers on the front or the 3.5 millimeter jack for your headphones. It also comes in this decent little briefcase style soft carry case. Now, as you'll see, there is a hole on the bottom of the case for a light stand, and that will fool you to think that you can actually leave the monitor in the case and just pop the whole thing on a light stand. But you will find out that that is just simply not practical to do. The main reason being that uh, if you keep anything in these pockets, as soon as you flip it open, that's all gonna fall on the ground. It's, it's just a little too cumbersome, you know, considering you would have to attach the V mount or the gold mount battery, then your wireless receiver. It's just a lot going on with this. Um, however, I think the idea is, is that you would then use the case as the built in sun hood I, or something like that. So you see here, the idea is the monitor sits in here with these straps and, uh, you know, I don't know. I, mm, it wasn't for me, you know, I give them an A for effort. So I just take it out of the case. You know, you already have this built-in light stand. It's got the perfect uh, size for a baby pin. You just drop it down and away we go. Now I, out on set, was using it with a rolling stand and then went completely wireless with V-mount and my 3000 Vaxxis receiver. Now, you can also use the plastic uh, little tabletop legs and pop those in the bottom and bolt them into the side. It comes with all the accessories to do that. You know, if you just wanna throw it on your camera cart as well, you have that option too. All right, here we'll just watch the boot up time. So there you go. I'm now gonna connect the Komodo via SDI. And there it is. Okay, so other than that, this bad boy does everything you would expect to any high quality monitor to do. Here you see you have four programmable function buttons. You know, your center marker, focus peaking, false color, waveform. There's also the option for a vector scope in here. There it is. So it's a double tap system, double tap to do false color. You also have your waveform. As you can see here, you have RGB parade. 
You have normal waveform, you have RGB waveform, there's the parade. I really like that. You know, the point is it has focus peaking, histogram, false color, vector scope, waveform, even anamorphic D squeeze is an option you can program into one of those four programmable function buttons. You can even customize the aspect ratio. You know, so all the typical fun options are there. Me personally, I just only utilize the waveform as you can see here. It just lives right up in the upper corner. That's all I ever use with it. That's all I need with it. You know, I, I'm, I ever since uh, I've jumped to the EL zone, I don't mess with in false color anymore. So I don't care about that. Um, it was just, you know, this was mainly a great idea for a director client monitor. Beautiful for Video Village, just for great reference, you know, and the fact that it's 10 bit can't go wrong. You got a lot of different options for color management, but it was just nice to have the waveform there anytime that I'm looking at this monitor and just get a quick reference of exposure. Now, it does come with its own kind of factory generic camera pre-installed LUTs. However, uh, if you're like me, you just wanna throw on your own LUTs and it's very easy to do that via this USB port right in the front. Now, I do enjoy the small things as some of you know, and I like this little handle on the top. Now, something else I should point out since we used it for six hours straight in the hot California sun is that there are vents integrated on the top and bottom which means you will have zero issues with overheating, even if you're like me and you chose not to put a sun hood on it. The only real nitpick I have to say about this Megamon 15 is the navigation system. The menu navigation does seem a little bit old school to me. It's not super streamlined to use. It, to me, it's just not simple enough. You know, it's a lot of forward, back, back, forward, back. Uh, someone on set referred to it like uh, playing Super Mario Brothers on an old Nintendo system not one of these buttons is just a simple dedicated exit button. And I feel like that's what you need. Uh, rather, we have lots of buttons, but each one has like three or four different functions. That drives me crazy. An arrow button should be just that, an arrow button. It shouldn't also be a cancel button. Oh, but sometimes it's also an okay button. Uh, that drives me nuts. I don't wanna have to memorize all the different functions that each button does. You know, th that's just my own little pet peeve. Now, here's the thing. I know that's very brutal of me to talk trash on something as simple as menu navigation, but again, OC did send this to me for review and you all know how I roll here. I gotta give my honest take on it as, as someone that works on low budge uh, independent projects, right? I, I'm a working man, right? So if there's something that I find annoying to me, well, you guys know if there's anyone that's gonna tell you what annoys them, it's gonna be me. <laughs> but here's the silver lining. If the menu navigation is the only thing I can find to talk trash on, then that's a pretty good sign that this is a pretty awesome little monitor, all, all things considered. And you know, the reality is it's a 10-bit color display for only 900 bucks. Over 15 inches, a thousand nits of brightness, a contrast ratio of 1450 to one. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty sweet deal. And because it's 10 bit, you have a lot of options for color management. I mean, the first time I walked up and saw it on set in that bright hot sun without the sun hood and seeing how well it was maintaining all the contrast of the image, honestly, I was pretty damn impressed by its performance. And at the time, I wasn't even aware that it was a 10-bit monitor. Before OC reached out to me, I had no knowledge of this monitor whatsoever. So I had zero expectations. And I am completely honest when I say it actually is a pretty nice piece of kit especially considering the price and the features. The tilder here is if you're looking for a monitor that would be an excellent option for your director or your client, uh, I think the OC Megamon 15 is an excellent choice. I can confidently say that it will be remaining on all of my sets. One thing I wanted to mention for all of my Mac users out there is you all need to be well aware of one thing, one very important thing, and that is that OC does not provide a way for Apple users to update the firmware on this monitor. So that means only PC users are able to download firmware updates on the Megamon 15. When I reached out to the OC rep about this, I was told that I would just have to find a PC to download the firmware update. So I think this is a huge oversight on OC's behalf. So I don't know about you guys, but certainly here in LA, all the filmmakers that I know, 
only use Macs. So I guess uh, if you're a PC user, you can celebrate and be able to update the firmware on this monitor. Uh, for all of us Apple users, we're just SOL. As always, links are down below so you can further your own research. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, you know this is what we do. Real honest reviews as well as uh, sometimes I dabble in some street photography. Uh, we look at all different kinds of things, different cameras, different lenses, different gear. We do lighting breakdowns. We kind of do it all here. So if you're new here, I'm Justin Phillip. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Kid Tech or my production company at Dog Times Productions. I share a lot of BTS, including this little project that we recently did on the Red Komodo and some new Laowa Nanomorph. Uh, so that's pretty rad. I'd be on the lookout for that review in a couple months. As always, I gotta give a huge thank you to the number one sponsor of the show, which is the Dog Times Patreon, and of course, this week's Patreon producer, Scott Myers. Thanks for stopping by. For now, that is a wrap. Like that tilt at the end. Let's go back.